everybody. Happy New Year, and welcome to This Week in Figure Skating for the week of December 26, 2011 through January 1st, 2012. Though it's not the end or beginning of any skating year, it's dead in the middle. We're well into national season two, with Russian nationals concluding on Tuesday. Obvious news out of the way first, Evgeny Plushenko won his ninth. Against the likes of Patrick Chan, he might have liked higher scores, though. Of course, he wasn't perfect. His quad was a little better in his free than it was in his short, but his lutzes were another matter. He doubled one, then stepped out of another, after which they didn't count the two jumps that followed. His spins needed work, too. Alexei Mation was sure to comment afterwards about how he'd only been really recovered from his leg problems for ten days. Though he did pretty much win fair and square, if only because Archer Dinsky fell on his quad, though he did everything else after that. But really, the only competition here was for the bronze and third spot to Europeans. Third may have been held by Jean Bush after the short, but his free had more trouble. From the beginning, when he didn't fully rotate his quad, to the end where he pretty much botched his final combo, so he dropped to fourth, and Archer Dimitriev, who was in fourth after the short, fared worse with multiple errors, of which the fall on the partially unrotated Sal Cow was merely the biggest, holding on to fifth by less than a point, and bronze instead went to Sergei Voronov, who rose up from fifth when he landed his quad and then all his other jumps clean. There wasn't much else to the program, but after all he's been through, that was accomplishment enough. Skating almost as well was even Beriev, who had only a stumble out of his opening triple axel, but he lacked the quad, and of course he'd been all the way down in tenth after the short, so he ended up sixth, squeaking ahead of the unfortunate Konstantin Menchov, who was actually fifth in the free with his best spree of the year, and a quad double, but falling on the solo quad before that and a pair of doubles still dropped him from sixth to seventh. Equally obvious news, especially after Sunday, Vera Bezarova and Yuri Lenov won their first. Though they said afterwards they didn't really feel like national champions, since the top two Russian pairs were both out. Though Tatiana Volsoshar and Maxim Trankov's coach Nina Moser at least said they'd earned it. And they did have problems in the free with both their side-by-sides. Their winning margin in that segment which was smaller than their short winning margin. Three points over Xenia Stolbova and Peter Klimov, who skated a clean free with a triple-double-double combo and a throw-triple-flip, if only a double-twist, to rise up to second from third, knocking down Anastasia Martyshev and Alexei Roganov, who, like the winners, lost points on a double-axle single-axle sequence but landed side-by-side south cows and a loop and slip throws when they said afterwards that Stolbova was skating through illness. Between the former Grand Prix season and the latter's general history, a really great accomplishment for both pairs, you really wish there was room to send them somewhere. Even in fourth, Katarina Garibolt and Alex Enbert didn't do too badly, though they had trouble with their twist and their sal cows did not completed. She stayed afterwards after the fifth place disappointment of the short, she was proud of how they got back in the free. Lou Fabulous-Shishkin and Nodara Mazruze, on the other hand, had utter disaster on both their solo jumping passes and a hand down and their throw triple flip to boot, and that caused them to slip below even young pair of Azaliza Devenkova and Andre Deputat to finish sixth. In contrast, Devenkova and Deputat skating clean actually got the highest tech score of the night. And almost as obviously, especially after Sunday, Ekaterina Vrbova and Dmitry Solovia followed up their first with their second, though they themselves were not too satisfied with their performance afterwards. And they were helped out when Elena Ilyich and Nikita Katslapov again had trouble. This time he went off majorly on the twizzles and never seemed to get back into it fully after that. And Ekaterina Ryazanova and Elite Tchenko, as well as spin troubles, were a little hindered overall by having been unable to run through their free dance for two weeks after she got a concussion on the 13th during practice. She explained it afterwards, adding she had to lie to keep the doctors from forcibly keeping her out, since they really couldn't afford to sit out nationals. It paid off. They were actually fourth in the free dance, slipping behind Ekaterina Pushkash and Jonathan Guerrero by about a point, but they'd had five points of them after the short, so they safely got bronze just ahead of them and their spot to Europeans and very probably Worlds. The ladies' competition was the last to begin and end, but it was a little more interesting, though there too the defending champion won. Adelina Sotnikova took her third on the strength of a short program, going finally for a triple let's triple loop combo. The loop got partially downgraded, but everything else was great. The free was a little more problematic. There she went for the combo again, that loop was fully downgraded, but she was skating perfectly outside that combo until her last three jumping passes, when she stepped out of her salcow, put a hand down on her loop, and singled her axle, and was second in the free to Julia Lipnitskaya, who skated a pair of clean programs with a triple toe, triple toe, in the short, to win silver, though she was third going into the free. A boy behind Sini Makarova, who got another decent short out with a triple toe, triple toe, even if her loop was partially downgraded. Unfortunately, Makarova didn't keep it up in the free. She partially underrated and fell in her opening flip. Her triple toe, triple toe was less successful in, than in the short, with the second jump being fully downgraded. And between two more downgrades, she ended up getting only one other triple ratified. She was sixth in the segment and dropped to fourth behind Alina Leonova, who went the opposite way. She was fifth in her short, where she stumbled out of her first triple toe and had to add a full toe to her triple flip later for a combo after which she cited fatigue after her busy Grand Prix season. Her triple toe, triple toe wasn't clean in the free either, and her other errors included a single flip, and she was way behind the top two. 
but further ahead of Makarova than Makarova was ahead of fifth and sixth. Elena Ridinova took the former, letting a triple let's triple toe in the short and skating more or less clean throughout the competition outside of falling on the same combo in the free. And Alyssa Valenda took Mishieva, the latter. Like Leonova, she had trouble in the short for which she studied fatigue after when she fell on her triple let's and she fell on her flip and sal cow in the free. The last Litnitskaya, Radinova, and Tektomisheva are all too young for Europeans and worlds. The third berth, instead, goes to seventh place, Polina Korobainikova, who had multiple problems in both programs. But the other two Polinas were both bigger disappointments, Philippine especially with her utter disaster of a short and less than clean free, which landed her in tenth. And Sofia Birakova managed to hold on to all her jumps in a fourth place short with a triple toe, triple toe. But in the free, which she rotated the triple toe, triple toe, she fell on her first three jumping passes and had another downgrade after that. Like Makarova, she had only one clean triple. She was 14th in the segment and 9th overall. However, as the 4th highest age eligible finisher, her season may not be over yet. Russia named their European team after the event in accordance with what the results would expectedly dictate. But there is concern as to whether two of its members will be able to go. Less so for Blashenko. He shouldn't be eligible because he doesn't have the qualifying score and there's no senior B event for men before Europeans. But everyone's always put him above the rules. Alexander Gorshkov points out, rightly enough, the rule wasn't exactly made to exclude guys like him. He's had a board with the ISU on the matter and gotten back a positive response, so it looks like Plushenko's going to get an exemption. In fact, he may have already, but as I record this Monday morning, exactly what's happened officially is a bit fuzzy. On the other hand of the scale of favoring, the Russian Federation apparently didn't think Korobainikova had a chance at the European team because now they might not be able to get her a visa in time. So that's where Birakova comes in. They've started the process for her. Moser, who is in Saransk with her junior pair, Tatiana Novik and Andrei Novoselov, who performed disappointingly, by the way, was also able to give an update on her top students. According to her, Maxim Trenkov has completed treatment and Tatiana Volzozhar is still undergoing it, but are on the on the ice and she expects them to be fully ready for Europeans. This weekend, the two skaters themselves posted a new blog in which they pretty much said the same thing. Another Russian making updates this week was Ilya Averbuk, who may have noticed some people being confused on just how the whole partner swapping thing of the new Ice Age season will work, so he did some explaining on Facebook. Apparently, it's actually two competitions with each skater for him or herself. Everyone will compete with someone different each week. Each team per week will get their scores, which get assigned to each skater, and at the end, the winners will be the man and lady each with the highest score. Both sexes will also compete for a pair of audience choice awards. The next huge scale nationals is Canadian nationals, for which the starter orders are now up, except for senior pairs, since three of the bide pairs have to draw for their skating order. But what should be noted is in the ladies, Alexei Kalinis, who is the first alternate, is on there, and Marion Sampson isn't, so that withdrawal is now official. Ice stands includes teams that withdrew from the challenge, too, probably since there's still one empty berth to spare, even with them. Speaking of Canada, turns out Scott Moyer was right. He and Tessa Virtue should have won that free dance at the Grand Prix finale, and their score came out below Meryl Davis and Charlie White, only because they lost half a point due to the GOEs of their combination lift being calculated wrong. The software hadn't been upgraded to match the rule changes passed back in July. Davis and White are still the winners overall, of course, but the free dance score has been changed in the records. The ISU, when announcing this, said they'd done some random checks of scores at other competitions where the faulty programs were being used and found no instances of this actually affecting overall standings anywhere, so they've declared the matter fixed and apologized for any inconvenience. But more on the subject of ice dance, the new coaches for Spanish champions Sarah Hurtado and Adria Diaz were announced as Virtue and Moore's predecessors, Marie-France Dubre and Patrice Lazon. And it turns out the Spaniards haven't been the only ones on the coach go-around lately. Word is, Nathan Chen has left his native Salt Lake City and longtime coaches Stephanie Groskup and Carol Kovar, and is currently training in California with Rafael Arutunian, whom he's worked with already during the summers, but he may now be there full time. And Darren Mabaduzade has left Delaware and Priscilla Hill for Colorado Springs and Christy Kral. He spoke about it while performing in Philadelphia last week, saying mostly he wanted the environment of Colorado Springs. Eddie Shipstad, one of Kral's assistants, speaks likewise. He's out here to stay focused and become the best skater he can be. Since he came 10 days ago, the difference in where he was and where he is now, he's a different skater. The revamping the free, training the quad, and he's actually not sure he's going to stay in Colorado Springs permanently. He's not thinking past nationals right now. One definite temporary stayee in Colorado Springs is Rachel Flatt, who has returned to the city that currently has a 45-foot image of her up to promote the upcoming Four Continents, which she calls definitely a little bizarre. There are three weeks for the holidays, and she's wearing the Tom's at Crashing again. Phil Bloom her in the video back to Justin Dillon in California. She revealed that she had skated through a bad ankle yet again in Russia, and while she still liked to qualify for events like Worlds and Four Continents, even if not being involved in the Grand Prix finale did make her finals a lot easier, she does say, 
I think people are expecting a certain level of performance from me, as I do. People want to see that it is possible to train at an elite level and go to an elite college. For me, that's not what this is about. I'm skating to perform at a high level and enjoy my performance. That's my goal. Earlier Delaware departee Ashley Bachner was also interviewed at Holiday Dreams on Ice, and she's quite confident right now, saying, I know it's going to be my year. It is. If I perform the way I'm practicing, I'm going to be set. This is, I think, my national to lose. Though later, when she saw that in print and perhaps realized how it came across, she tweeted, Whoops, looks like somebody has to work on their humble swagger. Sorry guys, I'm just excited to compete. She's revamped her long too, not the music, but the Greek choreograph the second half as well as adding a triple flip, triple toe. But of course, the big star of that show was Johnny Weir, and that was our first alert to his subsequent nuptials this week. He and Victor Bornoff tied the knot on the last day of the year, at least in the paperwork, though the actual ceremony is going to be in the summer. He describes him as kind of everything I've ever looked for and aspired to be in a relationship with. We've known each other for a long time and we reconnected over the summer and it's just been a whirlwind. I'm very happy with my personal life and also my professional life and I thank God I can be exactly where I'm at. He also said he'll start working with Galena again in late January after the honeymoon, but about what will come of it, it's still a firm maybe. We're keeping our lips tight about all that. I have made it no secret to my fans, especially, that I am resuming training with Galena at the end of January and I want to see where I can go. If there is a moment for an official announcement that is yes or no after training I realize I am too old and have to retire, then there will be some kind of announcement in the spring. But for now, I really want to close myself off from the world. I'm not saying no, I'm not saying yes. A yes or no will come soon. I'm going to start training as though I were to come back. Javier Fernandez too has been interviewed and reflects on his breakout fall. I didn't even expect that when I started the season. I'm so happy that I can compete with the top skaters. I didn't expect to go to the final. Last year, I wasn't even close to the podium. It was a big surprise this year. Now he definitely thinks he could make the podium at Europeans, and next year he says he's going to have to work harder because now he's motivated to stay around at the top. Brian Arcer also talks about the work they did on his non-jump elements. The jumps were there, however his spins, transitions, skating skills, and other components need to be addressed. It's easy to get hung up on quads, but in order to compete at the top level, you need to have the full package. He's still doing far more quads in practice, though, than he used to, so while he's always had a natural knack for them, he's much more confident now. But at the moment, he does not plan to do two of them in the short program because he doesn't have enough confidence for that yet. And he's been watching figure skating attract interest in Spain for the first time and notes, they're calling me and I'm in the newspaper and make the news, which is not normal in Spain. They open the sports news with me. This is really interesting and I am so impressed. I don't know how to make it work that ice skating can become a normal sport in Spain like it is in Russia or in Japan, where it is one of the top sports. For now, everybody is crazy about football. It's going to be difficult to fight with football. As the Christmas shows wrap up, Stars on Ice started their shortened tour this year in Lake Placid, who grew up actually bigger than it's usually been there in recent years, with Ryan Bradley debuting and possibly getting a marriage proposal, Sinead and John Kerr also debuting and performing Texogenesis in a newer number, both Kurt Browning and Katarina Gordieva skating to different versions of Feeling Good, and their first complete run-through of the finale. They'd only had three days preparation. An hour-long special of it will apparently be broadcast. Over here, meanwhile, the early Oberstdorf Gala was broadcast live and included a couple of fiery numbers, the Nelly Gonchin and Alex Gaggi, Moonlighting and Acrobats, as well as Eliana Sevchenko and Robin Silkeby skating to a song by a children's choir. There were telecom trophies sold, by the way, to a bidder from Frankfurt, who paid 213.13 euros for it. And finally, looking further ahead to the 2014 Olympics, the ISU has released the qualification procedures for the three different sports, and it has not too much changed in the figure skating singles. Same number of entries, same world spot according to normal qualification rules. Of course, those have changed since the last one, and false spots minus host entries, which of course probably won't be necessary for this one. Though there may no longer be any rotating of the qualifying event since it's the Nebelhorn Trophy again. Qualifying for the new team event will be done with points earned by a country's best skater in each discipline according to their placements at Worlds in the Grand Prix finale. Up to two different skaters or couples in each discipline can earn points for a country. If they don't earn points at Worlds, they can at Europeans or for continents instead. If they don't earn points there, they can at Junior Worlds. If they don't make the Grand Prix finale, they can earn points at their best individual event. And if they don't earn any points there, they count on the Junior Grand Prix. As pretty much stated earlier, 10 countries will qualify, each team will ideally field one competitor in each discipline, and they must have someone for at least three of the four disciplines. Each team will nominate a captain, though it doesn't say what the captain does. Skaters will earn points in accordance with their placements, and five teams will move on to the freeze after their shorts. Also, they can't send different entries from the individual events for the team events, though if they have multiple entries in any discipline, they can choose themselves who's on the team. And they can replace up to two entries between the two segments, so they have to make the decision literally right after the shorts end. Also, there won't be a draw in the team event. They'll do a reverse ranking like they do in the Grand Prix. And that is this week in figure skating. Good night.